today we're basically going to uh, go through um, something I forgot to cover at the very start, which um, Lisa's uh, dad reminded me this weekend uh, that I needed to, to get to. Or not this weekend, but I was up in New Hampshire and he, he gave me a story which I thought was a good one, which gets the point across, which is sort of at the end of, end of chapter one. Um, and you probably read it, but uh, the point in the chapter, but just I think it's important enough to reiterate it. Um, then there's the, uh, the probability mass functions that we talked about before. We're just going to continue on. I'm going to do a couple examples and talk about conditional probability mass functions and do a little bit more of durations with respect to expectations. And the reason I think that's actually quite, quite important is that, um, as I was mentioning before, these no the notion of features that you use to talk about um, uh, probability density functions and probability mass functions, those are things that people, like the, most of that rest of that book is about different distributions and how to derive these features. And there, you know, it's, there's tricks to doing that. Like how do I, how do, I do it for this particular distribution? Um, it turns out that a lot of the interesting distributions out there, um, you can use different mathematical techniques to come up with the expectances and variances. And, you know, the rest of the book sort of talks about um, different kinds of uh, mathematical tools and applying those mathematical tools to those, those, those distributions. So um, I guess the point is, is that most of the subject matter in probability will be covered up to sort of this point, except for the last part about statistics. And uh, you know, that's in, in a later chapter in the book. Um, I'm, if, you, if you're interested in that, and I, I think I'll, I'll come by with a handout about that later, um, maybe, maybe uh, Friday. Um, just because I think that that part of the book is pretty interesting in terms of uh, statistical inference and so on and so forth. And then I'm going to move on to um, starting into probability density functions sort of at the same level as we did yesterday with the probability mass functions, which will then uh, you know, tail into Tina, who's going to start talking to you, where you're actually going to start doing some applications with probability density functions. So I'm just going to sort of push you through the start of that and then uh, she'll take over with some actual density functions with respect to three problem sets that deal with, um, I, th I believe she's going to give you uh, uh, stuff dealing with what she does at, at, her, at her job. Um, so um, the first thing is, it's, it, this is a point about, um, you know, I guess the point is, is that if I asked you if the number of citizens in a city goes up, do you expect that the electricity uh, load would go up? Okay, so a lot of people would say, yeah, I think that's true. But what if I were to tell you, uh, statistically, I can show in Tucson, uh, Arizona, that every year uh, the population goes down from 750, or sorry, from, goes up from 500,000 to 750,000, and yet the electricity load goes down. Um, does someone have a, a reason why they might think that's the case? Well, it depends how you define load. If it's just percentage of capacity utilized, uh -huh. if they keep... Oh, it's just total... No, but this is just total, like, oh, yeah. how many megawatts? Air conditioners. Air conditioners, that's right. And which is basically... The point is, is that everyone leaves in the summer, and uh, uh, the load goes down, because everyone turns on their air conditioner. So um, I think the point in here that I'm trying to make is that uh, you can take all the statistical data about, like, over 10 years, and say, oh, well, you know, these two things are correlated, but in reality, there's just a missing variable, which is the, the fact that the temperature is rising, and there's this, this fact that people leave because the temperature is rising. But because the temperature is rising, each per individual person wants, is basically going to use more load. And um, so, so the point is, is that when you analyze and do statistics, don't take you know, statistical, quote, proofs of things as, you know, this is the, this is the final say on this, or that because the statistics say this, that that impl you know that you can say that one event caused the other. You can't actually do that. Very. Um, so let me jump into probability mass functions again. You know, we talked before a little bit about just a single uh, variable probability mass function, and um, in reality, I guess the, the point here is is that you can actually do this in multiple dimensions, and uh, that's what we call a compound uh, probability mass function. And so basically, uh, you know, what's the probability of x comma y given um, x zero comma y zero? That's just a that's a, a probability, and it has, you know, the same sorts of probabilities, which is that in properties, which is like the summation over x comma y of this is uh, one, um, and then 
and then the other point is is that you know if you integ integrate over or sum over a particular random variable x, that you get the um, other ran the, the PMF for the other random variable out, and vice versa. And I'd like to sort of go through um, we pick up um, an example that we started uh, yes yes uh, Tuesday and talk about um, a uh, the distribution for a cumulative, um, uh, the, uh, sorry, of a compound PMF where um, what we do is, and this is where we, we started, we started with, uh, you know, the number of heads given an, e, you know, an even coin being flipped uh, is one random variable uh, H. Now let's pick another random variable R, where R is the number of, um, you know, the, the longest run in the sum, so, uh, in, in, in the set. So, for example, here um, there are three heads, so that's the longest run. Here there are two, so that's two. Here there are one, or there's one run. Here there's a, here's two in a row. There's that's the longest run in there. Here's um, two again. Here's one. Here's two, and here's um, zero. Three. Oh, sorry, not zero, but three. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's draw this out. And this is um, uh, this is uh, x, or let's call this uh, h, and this r. Two, three, and then uh, zero. Oh, sorry, one. Two, three, and that's it. Okay, so. Um, so basically, we can go through each of these, and if we say that the probability p that an h comes up is equal to uh, one half h sub i, then um, we can put the points up in the space again. So uh, a one and a one, there's only one of those, so that's um, uh, one eighth. Uh, then uh, let's see, then a two, a two and a one. Well, actually, maybe what we should do is go down this list. A three and a three is uh, here, and that's um, one eighth. A uh, two and a two, um, there's two of those, so there's a, a, a one quarter. And um, a two and a one, uh, there's only one, so two comma one, that's one eighth. Um, and a one and a two, there's there's two of them, so a one and a two, and let's see, uh, two and a two, we did that one, a one and a one, which we did already, and a one and a two, we did again, and a zero and a three. Zero and a three, that's um, uh, one eighth, right? So just as a quick check, um, if you sum these, you get one, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one quarter, one one eighth, and one eighth again. Um, all right. So, um, all right. So, uh, that sort of is this compound um, notion of a compound PDF. And um, let me let me ask you this: uh, in if if I wanted to ask you graphically. What what is um, p of r, comma r zero given that h is uh, equal to two? Um, how how graphically would you try to figure that out? Someone have a intuition on? Okay, so h equals two. You're saying that's that set of events, and that's right. That's right. So you'd normalize by the sum of the set, set of events, which is one quarter plus one eighth, which is three eighths. So the probability of R, well, it's either um, a two or it's a one. And the um, probability is uh, one quarter over three eighths that it's um, a two. And, it, and the other probability is that it's one eighth over three eighths that it's one, and we can go through and um, get, yeah, okay, this, 
this is two thirds. 